Okay. All right, Pastor. All right, we Pastor. are live, Jim. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, men of God. Good morning, women of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Call on this day, uh, May the 26, 2022, a day that was not promised to us. So we just want to tell God, thank you. Uh, we start off by saying this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, and uh, this month, uh, we've carved out this month and specifically catered uh, to the women. We've dedicated this month to the women. And this is the first uh, in the nine year history of the National Men's Prayer Call. So we've been excited and delighted and just informed uh, throughout the entire month of May. And we have another dynamic speaker uh, this morning. The topic is how to have healthier relationship. And then it says a female perspective on relationship. Nine divine ladies. And our speaker this morning is none other than our, our first lady, Audrey Raphael. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. We're excited to have you this morning. Uh, and so we're, we're not going to be before you long, but we all know uh, what's going on in our country. Uh, that and some things that some tragic events that happened over the last couple of days uh, in our country, and we want to just acknowledge uh, those individuals that lost their lives uh, in Robb Elementary in Texas. There was 19 kids killed, two adults. Uh, the grandmother is in ICU. She was shot in the face. Multiple police officers uh, were wounded. And then let's not forget the kids and the staff that had to witness this horrific uh, act of senseless, senseless violence. And then also you had another young lady, um, a pastor in Georgia that was doing uh, some ministering uh, and the individual stabbed and set her on fire and killed her. So we want to pray for her and her congregation as well. And we just going to go into prayer. And Isaiah 40 and 29 says, he gives us strength, he gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. And so we know that there, there's some weary uh, individuals out there and we know that there's some individuals that are weak right now. There's no other way to explain it because my, my spirit is, is perplexed. My spirit is, is, is hurting. So without further ado, we're going to go into prayer. So dear Heavenly Father, we just come this morning uh, as humble as we know how. Father, we just thank you uh, for this opportunity, Father God, to fellowship uh, one to another. We thank you uh, for the National Men's Prayer Call, Father, who uh, you planted the seed in Dr. Uh, Kenneth Green some nine years ago, and, and here we are, Father God, still growing. Uh, our roots are digging deeper, and Father, we just thank you uh, for this month, Father God, where we, uh, where you planted the seed in our spirit to allow the women uh, to take the lead, Father God, and talk about our relationships from a female perspective. And so, Father, we've had a tremendous uh, outpouring father god we've had tremendous and dynamic speakers father god so far this morning and we have another dynamic speaker this morning and so father we just thank you father for the insight father god and for uh, the valuable points father god and the, the concern father god that uh we were able to uh digest and 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 and, and just uh take in understanding father god what they expect and what they would like in the, in the relationship but father this morning father we want to just uh thank those, uh, thank all the men for joining us and thank all the women for joining us on this uh, prayer call. And uh, we just thank you, Father God, for allowing them the opportunity, Father God, to, or allowing us the opportunity to come together and fellowship one to another. Father, this morning, we know uh, that our country, Father God, has been shot yet again. Uh, has, has been, uh, there's a devastating act of violence, Father God, that occurred, Father God, in Texas, where um, the 19 children were killed and two adults but Father, we don't call, we don't pray to inform you, Father God. We pray to invite you. And so, Father, we want to invite you, Father God, into, into this situation, Father God, because we know that you already know about it, Father God. So we want to invite you in, Father God, because those individuals are, are hurting right now, Father. They, they need uh, your word. They need your understanding, Father God. They need your love. They need your nurturing right now, Father God. We always speak of you as being a healer, Father God. There's some healing that needs to take place right now, Father. Some, some, some families, Father God, structures have been damaged beyond repair. Lives have been changed. The foundation of the family, the foundation of the school, the foundation of the country has a crack, Father God, in it that can't be repaired. So, Father, we just thank you this morning, Father, that we're able to 
come to you, Father God, in sincere prayer, Father God, and just thank you, Father God, for those individuals that had to step in and deal uh, with those family and that has, that has to continue to deal um, with those that have survived this ordeal, Father, and just ask, Father God, that you continue, Father God, to care and nurture for them, Father God, and give them, provide them with the understanding that only you can provide them with. Because, Father God, I don't think that, Father God, that our faith is, has been compromised. But, Father, we are, we are stressed, Father God. We're mad this morning, Father God, because of this senseless act of violence. When will it stop, Lord? So, Father God, we just put it in your hand, Father God, because we need those questions answered, Father God. And we know that they can only be answered by way of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, speak to those families, Father. Nurture them, Father God. Protect them, Father God. Speak to their minds. Speak to their hearts. Father God, they lost their babies, Father God. Nine, 10, 11 year old children. The innocence of this, of the, of this senseless act of violence. Trying to put themselves in, in, in position to protect these babies. So, Father God, we call on your protection, Father God. The un unwavering protection of you, Father. So, we know, Father God, that you will step in. We know that you are there. So, Father, we ask that you continue to cover them, Father God. Lift them, Father God. Give them understanding. And, Father God, we ask that you continue to uh, provide comfort uh, and support for the church in Georgia where the pastor was killed uh, sensitively by an individual that she was trying to minister to, that she was providing counseling for. So, Father God, we, we just don't know the day nor the hour. But we know that you're always there. We know that we can always count on you. So, Father God, we need clarity and we need understanding that only you can provide. And, Father, on this morning, uh, we ask, Father God, that you give uh, First Lady uh, Raphael uh, what she needs, Father God. We ask that you remove her and allow the Holy Spirit to take full reign. And just, Father God, continue to build on uh, what has already uh, been started at the beginning of this month. And we just thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to listen, Father God, and to have these ladies on to share their perspective on relationship. Father, we know that we, we know that you can. We know that you will. And this is our prayer in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen, Brother Anthony, and amen again. We just uh, again so excited and delighted to be able to come and just share with you the power of prayer but also spiritually enhanced personal development. And this month is no different. We, are, we have a theme for this month has been honoring mothers and honoring women. And as a result, we brought in nine divine ladies that have a divine message that's going to help strengthen you in your relationships and also in how you interact with your children, your, your job, your community, your church, Everything that you do, if you understand how to have a healthy relationship, how to get your mental health in order, it will strengthen you and make you a better person. And this morning, um, you know, as we have just searched across the nation and brought in these powerful women, today is no different. Today we have Audrey Raphael. Now, I'm just in reading her bio, I was impressed. I was like, wow, she is pretty powerful. She's a woman of God, of course. She's a wife. She's a mother. She's a seasoned professional. She served for over 16 years managing commercial property here in the DFW area. In recent years, she decided to follow her passion in the self-care industry. So she's a spa owner, but she so also serves as a center manager and health coach for Jenny Craig. And we can go on and on and on, but one of the most powerful attributes that make her her is that she's the wife of a powerful uh, young man, uh, Pastor Sadia Graffiel. So she's the, they have taken over over the um they have uh, this been installed as the new pastors at the at the Metro Harvest Church there in Cedar Hill. It's thriving, it's growing, and that ministry was started by Dr. Uh, Kenneth Green. So this morning we are just honeymoon happy and peacock proud as we introduce to some and present to the rest of you First Lady Audrey Raphael. Are you there, uh, Sister Audrey? I am here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited to be with you guys this morning. Um, I have a little confession to make. I've kind of been eavesdropping on you guys for <laughs> almost the entire time. Uh, you've had the National Men's Prayer Call. Um, you've been a blessing uh, to my life. And Brother Anthony and Brother Reggie, your prayers have always been on time. So 
I thank you guys for just having me and thinking enough of me um, to include me in the divine nine. I don't feel worthy of even being in <laughs> the group of the divine nine. Um, we've had some, some very, very powerful mes messages um, and I'm just excited to add to that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. My husband already told me I had too much information. So I'm going to try <laughs> to keep it short and sweet and simple uh, for you guys. Um, I want to start off by saying, Johnny Mac, I'm going to steal uh, your saying this morning. I know you usually say note takers or money makers. Um, but I'm going to change that up this morning and I'm going to say note takers are relationship curators. How about that? Note takers are relationship curators. And man, I hope you've been taking notes this month because you have really gotten a lot of information that I think um, can be valuable to you. And even those that are in a good place in your relationship, uh, you can go from good to great. There's always room for improvement and uh, to be better. So uh, my question for you today is, are you a curator in your relationship? Are you a curator in your relationship? The word curator means one who has the care and superintendence of something, especially one in charge of an art collection or exhibit. It's a person who selects content for presentation and gives the overall shape and feel to an art exhibit. So your partners are your art exhibit. Are you curating your partner? Are you caring for her? The one you've selected, the one you've chosen? Um, what overall shape and feeling have you given to her? And how do you present her to the world? How does she look under your leadership? Um, just to be a little bit transparent with you guys this morning, I've been under a curator that had me looking real raggedy. So um, how do you cur curate your relationship effectively? Um, from my perspective and my past experiences, emotional safety is at the top of my list. And I've been hearing that word a lot this month from a lot of our women that we need to feel emotionally safe. And in my opinion, if we feel emotional safety, we can communicate effectively. Uh, we can have those tough conversations, um, you know, that are hard to have sometimes. Um, but if we feel emotionally safe, we can express ourselves um, and know that um, you, you're not going to get upset or, or uh, as, as the kids say, pop off <laughs> on us. And uh, we know that we can um, just feel safe um, to express ourselves with you. So um, creating safety in a relationship um, is born from functionality. Functionality is born from maturity in the people that are involved. Um, there has to be energy um, into growing yourself um, in maturity. You know, how do we do that? Um, I know it's really tough for sometimes, sometimes for men to uh, be vulnerable, um, but for your growth and for your maturity, you have to um, do an emotional check-in with yourself. I know Diane talked about that on Tuesday. I really like that term, uh, emotional check-in. Um, you can't, you cannot support us emotionally if you have not checked your own emotions. Um, and in doing that is putting in some work. So that means um, if you have past trauma that you need to deal with, um, there's nothing wrong with going to counseling. If you, um, you need to strengthen yourself in your word, um, prayer, your prayer life needs to be strong. Even you, your self-care, taking care of yourself, having your guys night out, having your, your pedicures or, or whatever it is that makes you um, feel good about yourself. Um, and once you do that for you and you have that inner peace about yourself, you're able to support us emotionally. You cannot support anybody else's emotions if you don't have your own emotions in check. We aren't safe with you emotionally um, if your emotions are all over the place. So that's, that's where you start. You start with you. Um, and 
there's nothing like a, a woman seeing her man confident and, and um, cared for and looking good and, and um, having, having himself together. Um, because just like uh, sometimes y'all say we're arm candy for you or y'all are the same thing for us. Um, and when you look good, we look good. So that's a good place to start is um, working on your own emotions. And once you um, get through that and you find that inner peace in yourself, um, then you can provide that for us. Um, when you do this for yourself, you have the power to make deep intimacy available in your relationship. And this can transcend into any relationship. Um, cause it's not just us that have to feel emotionally safe with you. It's your children, your parents, your friends, your staff. Um, you don't want people walking around on eggshells because they don't know how you're going to react to something. So th these things can transcend into any relationship. The, the connection that safety fosters is the experience of the divine a direct sensual, physical, emotional, and intellectual experience of God. And that's what y'all are supposed to be for us, God here on earth. The more intimately, the more, the more you grow intentionally in your maturity, the more functional um, your relationship will be. The more we'll, we're able to experience the, the touching of God with ourselves and with each other, um, we just grow in our human form. So what I want to do um, for you guys this morning is I want to give you um, some disciplines, as my husband says, some disciplines um, into how to provide emotional safety um, in your relationship. There's no better starting point for the journey of a healthy relationship than to find ourselves in an environment across from someone whom we feel safe with. I wanna share some qualities that will help cultivate a deep safety for you and your partner. And these apply to women as well. Uh, we also have to provide safety for you guys too. Um, the more these behaviors are shown, the more safety you can create and the more opportunity you have to experience healing and light together in your relationship. So the first one I wanna talk about is warmth. Consistent warmth fosters a strong bond as opposed to just glimpses of warmth with coldness. Men, don't give your partner the cold shoulder during conflict. Um, delivery is everything. Always, even in conflict, isn't it's really, really difficult, but um, we just have to be intentional and in practicing it, but express yourself in love um, with your partner. It'll, it'll just help create an environment where both, both of you can receive what each other are trying to say. The second one is non-judgment. It doesn't mean that we don't have to take on something. It just means that we have to let someone share their humanity in many aspects and parts of who they are with us. Um, and don't, don't use their vulnerability or weaknesses against them. So if they share uh, past experiences with you, things that they've been through, um, don't, don't use that against them later. You know, that's a part of who they are um, and you have to accept them and make them feel um, like they're able to grow with you. Um, the third one is empathy the ability to feel into the emotions someone is experiencing. Just take a moment and step into their shoes. Um, you may not always agree and that's okay, um, but we have to be empathetic toward each other. It gives you a better understanding of what someone may be going through. Um, the next one is kind but firm boundaries. The ability to set kind limits foster a sense of containment and organization for someone. This limits the chaos, which can be terrifying and brings in the assurance of parameters that help someone be vulnerable. It models the agency born from when someone has enough self-knowledge to know what their limits are. So set those boundaries. We're not gonna yell 
at each other. Let's agree on that. We're not going to um, cut each other off. I'll give you an opportunity to speak. You give me an opportunity to speak. Um, and it holds your partner accountable as well. So um, the next one is consciousness, um, which is a commitment to cultivating a sense of spirit. And it fosters other qualities like faith, trust, abundance, well-timed surrender, um, knowing when to keep at something and knowing where to let it go. My husband always says, do you wanna be right or do you wanna be in love? And sometimes we have to um, just know when to let it go. Um, this promotes a humility and an open-heartedness, which invites a softening in most people. For those of us who um, were in charge of holding consciousness in a room as our role in the family system, which in my past, that was me. Even as a kid, I was the one that could calm everybody down. It's a big responsibility. Um, so for us to have that in you, it can be such a relief um, just for you to be conscious. Um, um, and, and know how to, to calm the situation down, even when we are um, at an emotional high. The next one is validation. Um, it's a generous offering that allows a person across from you to feel supported, accepted, and recognized. That's all we want, guys. <laughs> we want to feel validated. This process of validation in no way requires the offer offerer which is you to agree with what is said. You don't have to agree with us. Um, we, just want, we just want you to hear us. That's all. And, and let us know that you understand what we're saying. Um, the next one is presence. Offering your full presence in another is bringing your full being to listening or beholding. It also happens to be, in my opinion, the most deeply loving act is to be present. Don't, don't look away, you know, make eye contact with me, even hold my hand if you see that I'm emotionally stressed. Don't be on your phone. Give me your full presence when you see that um, I'm feeling some type of way. Um, that's, that's what women want you to do. They want you to be present. Um, the next one is sensitivity, um, being delicate, thoughtful, and considerate in your interactions with your partner. Even if we don't always get it right, um, it implies that you have a deep care for them. It shows that their well being is important. We are fragile creatures, guys. We need you to kind of be sensitive with us um, and caring with us. Um, even, even when we're not acting like fragile creatures, because I know we can be off the chain sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but we still need you to be sensitive um, with us. The next one is integrity. It's knowing the person across from you has the same value system as you. So if we're having issues, um, we can trust that you, you'll still make wise decisions and you don't go off and make and do crazy things just because we're in conflict with one another. Um, protectiveness, paternal protectiveness. Um, I call it the Papa, be Papa Bear, being Papa Bear. It gives us a sense that we are, are safe physically um, and emotionally, and it can heal, the num heal a number of wounds around having been neglected or abandoned in our past. I didn't grow up with a dad, you know, so um, that's something that's, that's super, super important. Um, is having that sense of protectiveness, and that doesn't mean going out fighting everybody. <laughs> but it means making, making us feel like uh, we're safe. Um, and the last thing is um, just consistency in all of these areas. Um, and you may not be able to do them all every day, um, but just, just finding some consistency in these things. So as I close today, um, I want to let you know that the end result of, of doing all of these disciplines, um, you'll have a partner that feels valued and valuable. You'll have a partner that can truly be themselves. 
You'll have a partner that can show their weaknesses and be vulnerable. You'll have a confident partner that feels seen, that feels heard, and that feels understood. And last but not least, you'll have a partner that can share themselves boldly and express themselves freely in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, and even sexually. Um, and we want all of that in a relationship that, that helps it to be well-rounded. Um, I want to encourage you to adopt the tools that you've been given this month. Um, allow them to serve as a guiding force on your journey towards safety in your relationships, connection, and healing. And in doing so, um, we can inspire others. Uh, we have a lot of young couples in our downline and when they can see us getting it right, it gives them hope. Um, two people can make the decision to create safety in a relationship as long as they are both committed to the process and take ownership of their individual roles. Um, so you have to take ownership in being um, the husband and I have to take ownership in being the wife. Um, thank you guys for your time this morning. I think I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Everybody be blessed. Um, I do have an assignment for you guys today. Um, I hope y'all took notes on those points. Um, just try to try to work on one at a time, and particularly the ones that you know you lack in, um, and put in some work. Like I said, um, most of you may be good um, in your relationships, but let's try to be great. Thank you. Hello, are you there? I see you're having some bandwidth problems. Can you unmute? Okay, well, there you go. Uh, who's closing, Johnny? Uh, Bernard. He's, uh, he's on mute you. still. Yeah. Well, did you take some well, do I need to come in here and close out for my wife? I think you. Uh, I think you no, need to. I got it. <laughs> but I having some problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I usually am the one having problems, but I. Okay, Bernard, do you have it? Bernard's coming in and out. Yeah, there you go. I think I'm good. My apologies. Okay. I am having a bandwidth uh, trouble. So let me just get straight to it. Um, Pastor Raphael, I, uh, awesome job uh, this morning. Um, I took a. I tried to keep up um, on my phone. Um, uh, notators are relationship curators, and I think that that's outstanding, and it certainly allows us to be in a position to uh, further um, uh, spawn a, a very a wonderful relationship uh, in marriages that are certainly made in heaven. So let me get right to it. Um, certainly, you said um, the very first thing that you mentioned, which was extremely important, is emotional safety emotional safety. I, I think that is the foundation uh, in a relationship to where uh, each other can uh, have that safe space to be able to communicate and share with one another in a deep way uh, and, and, and feel vulnerable and not uh, really um, be judged. Uh, and as you communicated earlier and not have that come back at you so that um, you, 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 you don't go into a shelter. So are you in a relationship where, where that man and or woman is uh, developing you, helping you to grow? Um, Self-care is certainly a, a, a very important um, aspect uh, in the relationship because if you don't care for yourself and are pro not providing that, that emotional um, development for yourself, you can't be there for, for the other person. Uh, safety fosters the experience of our divine God. The more you grow in maturity, the better you will be in your relationship. And I'm just regurgitating what she said, and I think it's extremely important. So let me get into the seven, I believe seven or eight disciplines that she communicated that will uh, help us get into a, relation, uh, a, a healthy relationship to create a safe uh, place uh, of safety for, for us if we exhibit and communicate these behaviors to one another. The first is warmth. Uh, which is a consistency that don't give her a cold shoulder uh, in conflict. Be intentional and express yourself in love. Number two, non-judgment. Let uh, one another share their humanity and be vulnerable and don't use that against them in the future. Number three, 
Empathy, be empathetic, take a moment and step into their shoes to understand how they're feeling. Look at it from their perspective. I don't always do that so well and, and my wife, wife is certainly working on me. And I will say, I'm being vulnerable, um, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't start off right in, in our relationship. And yeah, she was a little raggedy as well, but I think I'm doing better. And I, you know, what I think don't matter is what she thinks. And so I'll just be transparent in saying that. Number four, uh, set up some boundaries, some firm boundaries. This provides containment and will eliminate chaos. Know what your limits are and don't yell and cut off each other. Hold each other accountable and be there for one another. Number four, consciousness. This cultivates a deeper love. This promotes humility and an openness and softness. It provides a relief and calms the situation. Number five, validation. Validation. This is a thing that being a woman, certainly being validated, being present, being with them. Shut your mouth. That's what I need to do. And stop trying to get in the head and finish your conversation in word. Stop trying to express what you want, but just be quiet and listen. Just be intentional. Keep your mouth closed. Pay attention. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at the TV. <laughs> Hide that eye contact and be with. And the, one of the things that you can do is um, say this. If, if what I'm hearing you say and repeat it back to her so that she can see that you not only was listening, you were paying attention and can regurgitate what you communicated. And then certainly you have to apply that. Um, so pay and give your undivided attention. Number six, sensitivity. Be thoughtful and considerate with one another. Their well-being is extremely important. Number seven, integrity. And ensuring that you have the same values and morals. This will drive you in the, in the same direction. How can two walk together unless they agree? Number eight, paternal protectiveness. Um, of course, a woman needs to feel safe, not only physically and emotionally. This will help them deal with their past. Certainly, if, if you didn't have a father figure or a man in the household where you had that, that uh, father figure there to provide that experience. And number seven, consistency. Being consistent in all of these things, as she indicated, the end result of uh, applying these disciplines to your life will um, create a very valuable uh, experience with one another. Uh, each other will feel heard, uh, they will feel understood, and I think this is the ultimate thing, they'll be able to express themselves fully and freely in every way. I think you did an awesome job. Uh, certainly everyone who's on this line, share this uh, information with one another, um, access our various platforms, go back and reach straight over the divine nine that who shared over this past month some powerful information that will help uh, develop healthy relationships. So let me just close out in prayer. Uh, again, thank you so very much for all of the information that you shared. You did an outstanding job. You sort of closed out the month um, of the divine nine. So thank you again. Father in heaven, we just come before you as humbly as we can. Uh, not only, and I'm trying to do this myself, not just hearing the word, but doing, being a doer of it. And so uh, have that emotional check-in. Check in every week, uh, every day if you need to. Hey, babe, how am I doing? Is there a way that I could love you better? Is there something that I've missed? Is there something I could be doing? So Father, give us the, the eyes to see. Give us soft eyes to where we can stand back and look from a higher perspective, the things that we need to see that we may be missing, the smaller details. Have us uh, be sensitive and in tune with, with uh, their feelings and their emotions and their, the various body gestures where we should be able to detect, hey, something's going on. Uh, give us that uh, inner peace uh, so that we can provide that peace for them, that, that safety, that agape love, that feeling of uh, being heard um, and being understood so that we can cultivate a relationship uh, that is um, as just um, invaluable uh, for both of us, where we should be able to express ourselves with one another. Father, we thank you that, that we hear your voice. And as we hear your voice, we'll be a doer of that, where that we'll, we'll walk in the steps of the divine, that we will continue to grow in the, in the image uh, of you, Father, so that, so that others who are watching our relationships can grow thereby. As you, as you indicated, there are people who are coming, a generation coming behind us, and we want to set a pathway for them to follow, a pathway that is uh, developed by God and in a loving uh, manner. So Father, we thank you for going before us to show us the way above us, to watch over us, behind us, to encourage us, and within us to give us strength and peace. So we thank you for victory in our relationships, and we give you praise for this. In Jesus' name, amen. My apologies for the delay and, and my, my, uh, my internet. Back to you, sir. <laughs>